I'm Wendy. I'm from the Sheba Farm in Victoria in Australia. And I have the last stud of Drysdale sheep in Australia. Um, they are a rare breed here now. They're a modern breed developed in New Zealand in the 1940s and 50s with a double coat, which is really quite unusual in uh, you know, modern breeds, as I said. So, okay, look at the sheep. We'll start with the ram. They've got horns. The horns link to um, how coarse the fleece is and how harsh it, it feels. But actually all the sheep uh, have horns. Uh, the ewes have horns as well, just small horns. Um, and then the lambs develop them quite early. Uh, they're usually only a month or so old by the time they've got little horns like this one now. As you can see, the fleece hangs pretty much straight down off the animal. That helps to shed the water, that medullated outer coat. So they've got a wool undercoat and a medullated outer coat, a little bit like alpacas. So it's light, their fleece cut isn't huge in terms of weight, volume is something different. But the weight, because of the medullary and the hollow, they're very well insulated and it makes excellent carpets. So let's show you the wool itself. Here's a staple from an animal that has about, oh, it would have been five to six months fleece on it, um, which is a little bit longer than a commercial length, but it's actually quite a nice length to work with um, for hand spinning. As you can see, there's no, it, 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 this animal has been shorn before, this is not a baby tip, and it doesn't felt together, because right at the end here, that's the medullated part down there, the undercoat sits in, in this section here. When you go to spin it, um, traditionally with uh, double coated fleeces, you can spin it all together or you can split the two fleeces and do different tasks with each part of the fleece. Um, it's because there's no crimp and there's low lanolin, it's actually quite easy to separate out even without equipment. I'll just demonstrate because it shows the undercoat quite nicely. So that, I mean, that's not going to be a perfect split, but it'll go a good way to doing it. If you really want to do it perfect, then yes, combs would be your best bet. So the undercoat is a lot finer. There will be fibres even down to below 10 microns in um, tests that I've done, although it's pretty contaminated with stronger ones as well. And then this is the outer coat that almost becomes like horse hair. Very, very strong. There's the two coats sitting there like this. So yes, there's more than one way to split them up and spin them. But today I'm going to show how I spin with them together. Right, so back to spinning dry style wool. Now I'm using my Ashford traditional wheel here. Um, that's just the one that I've learnt to do this on and it's the easiest for me at this point in time. It only has quite a low tension on the drive band, just enough to get the um, to drive it all around. Also, with the um, bobbin tension, I've got it reasonably light but enough to take it has to take up. It's very easy to overspin this. It's a long staple and it doesn't have any crimp. So it does overspin very easily. All right, so picking up the wool. Now, this is raw wool. So it hasn't been washed at all. This is just how it comes. One of the important things with this, I find, is not to take too much all at once simply because it's partly the way that I spin. So this is one staple and that's more than enough at this point. All I find I need to do is just open it slightly like this and then I'm good to go. Um, yes, you can wash it first. Uh, 
with a staple like that, I find that if, if I'm to wash it, I have to be very careful. I have to um, try and hold them together because you take the grease out and they sort of just fall apart. So try it greasy first and if you don't like it, well fine, you can, you can wash it. Okay, so I tend to hold the entire staple and I'm not going too fast because as I said, it's inclined to want to over spin very easily. Put too much twist holding the back and the front and both coats are going out at the same time. So I said you just need enough to, to get it to take up. And if I stop and we do a bit of a test here. And that's not much tension at all. That's it really does want to overspin on you if you're not careful. So just slow your feet, perhaps be a little bit faster in your well, I have to tell myself to be faster in my hands a little bit. To make sure that I don't overspin this. Um, if you find that it's jamming up on you before it even gets to the bobbin, then you're going to have to put a little bit more of bobbin tension on it to get it to take up just that little bit quicker and easier. But I'm holding down the back here to, to now because it doesn't have that crimp, it slides out over each other really, really quite easily. A little bit like top, except of course that it is actually greasy, this stuff. And it does have the undercut in there. Some fleeces will have a little bit too much kemp and they're not quite as pleasant. But I find this quite an easy spin. It's very easy to get thin, to get it finer and finer. And because each of the fibres are long and they're very strong, um, you can always put a little bit more twist if you get it going a little bit. Hang on to it a little bit more. 